Seven Wonders of the World was a campaign started in 2000 to choose wonders of the world from a selection of 200 existing monuments. The popularity poll via free web-based voting and small amounts of telephone voting was led by Canadian Swiss Bernard Weber and organized by the new Seven Wonders Foundation, N7W, based in Zurich, Switzerland, with winners announced on 7 July 2007 in Lisbon at Estadio da Luz. The poll was considered unscientific, partly because it was possible for people to cast multiple votes. According to John Zogby, founder and current president CEO of the Utica, New York-based polling organization Zogby International, New Seven Wonders Foundation drove the largest poll on record. The program drew a wide range of official reactions. Some countries touted their finalist and tried to get more votes cast for it, while others downplayed or criticized the contest. After supporting the New Seven Wonders Foundation at the beginning of the campaign by providing advice on nominee selection, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, by its bylaws, having to record all and give equal status to World Heritage Sites, distanced itself from the undertaking in 2001 and again in 2007. The seven winners were chosen from 21 candidates, which had been whittled down from 77 choices by a panel in 2006. The new Seven Wonders Foundation, established in 2001, relied on private donations and the sale of broadcast rights and received no public funding. After the final announcement, New Seven Wonders said it did not earn anything from the exercise and barely recovered its investment. Machu Picchu is a 15th century Inca citadel, located in the eastern cordillera of southern Peru, on a 2,430 meter, 7,970 feet, mountain ridge. It is located in the Machu Picchu district within Urubamba province above the Sacred Valley, which is 80 kilometers, 50 miles, northwest of Cusco. The Urubamba River flows past it, cutting through the Cordillera and creating a canyon with a tropical mountain climate. Most archaeologists believe that Machu Picchu was constructed as an estate for the Inca Emperor Pachacuti, 1438-1472. Often mistakenly referred to as the lost city of the Incas, it is the most familiar icon of Inca civilization. The Incas built the estate around 1450 but abandoned it a century later at the time of the Spanish conquest. Although known locally, it was not known to the Spanish during the colonial period and remained unknown to the outside world until American historian Hiram Bingham brought it to international attention in 1911. Machu Picchu was built in the classical Inca style, with polished dry stone walls. Its three primary structures are the Indiwatana, the Temple of the Sun, and the Room of the Three Windows. Most of the outlying buildings have been reconstructed in order to give tourists a better idea of how they originally appeared. By 1976, 30% of Machu Picchu had been restored and restoration continues. Machu Picchu was declared a Peruvian Historic Sanctuary in 1981 and a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983. In 2007, Machu Picchu was voted one of the new seven wonders of the world in a worldwide internet poll. Machu Picchu is believed by Richard L. Berger, to have been built in the 1450s. Construction appears to date from two great Inca rulers, Pachacutec Inca Yapanqui, 1438-1471, and Tupac Inca Yapanqui, 1472-1493. Here is a consensus among archaeologists that Pachacutec ordered the construction of the royal estate for himself, most likely after a successful military campaign. Though Machu Picchu is considered to be a royal estate, Surprisingly, it would not have been passed down in the line of succession. Rather it was used for 80 years before being abandoned, seemingly because of the Spanish conquests in other parts of the Inca Empire. It is possible that most of its inhabitants died from smallpox introduced by travelers before the Spanish conquistadors arrived in the area. During its use as a royal estate, it is estimated that about 750 people lived there, with most serving as support staff who lived there permanently. Though the estate belonged to Pachacutec, religious specialists and temporary specialized workers, Mayaks, lived there as well, most likely for the rulers' well-being and enjoyment. During the harsher season, staff dropped down to around a hundred servants and a few religious specialists focused on maintenance alone. Studies show that according to their skeletal remains, most people who lived there were immigrants from diverse backgrounds. They lacked the chemical markers and osteological markers they would have if they had been living there their whole lives. Instead, there was bone damage from various species of water parasites indigenous to different areas of Peru. 
There were also varying osteological stressors and varying chemical densities suggesting varying long-term diets characteristic of specific regions that were spaced apart. These diets are composed of varying levels of maize, potatoes, grains, legumes, and fish, but the overall most recent short-term diet for these people was composed of less fish and more corn. This suggests that several of the immigrants were from more coastal areas and moved to Machu Picchu where corn was a larger portion of food intake. SD skeletal remains found at the site had lower levels of arthritis and bone fractures than those found in most sites of the Inca Empire. Inca individuals who had arthritis and bone fractures were typically those who performed heavy physical labor, such as the Mita, or served in the Inca military. Animals are also suspected to have migrated to Machu Picchu as there were several bones found that were not native to the area. Most animal bones found were from llamas and alpacas. These animals naturally live at altitudes of 4,000 meters, 13,000 feet, rather than the 2,400 meters, 7,900 feet, elevation of Machu Picchu. Most likely, these animals were brought in from the Puna region for meat consumption and for their pelts. Guinea pigs were also found at the site in special burial caves, suggesting that they were at least used for funerary rituals, as it was common throughout the Inca Empire to use them for sacrifices and meat. Six dogs were also recovered from the site. Due to their placements among the human remains, it is believed that they served as companions of the dead. Much of the farming done at Machu Picchu was done on its hundreds of man-made terraces. These terraces were a work of considerable engineering, built to ensure good drainage and soil fertility while also protecting the mountain itself from erosion and landslides. However, the terraces were not perfect, as studies of the land show that there were landslides that happened during the construction of Machu Picchu. Still visible are places where the terraces were shifted by landslides and then stabilized by the Inca as they continued to build around the area. It is estimated that the area around the site has received more than 1,800 mm of rain per year since AD 1450, which was more than needed to support crop growth there. Because of the large amount of rainfall at Machu Picchu, it was found that irrigation was not needed for the terraces. The terraces received so much rain that they were built by Incan engineers specifically to allow for ample drainage of the extra water. Excavation and soil analysis done by Kenneth Wright in the 1990s showed that the terraces were built in layers, with a bottom layer of larger stones covered by loose gravel. On top of the gravel was a layer of mixed sand and gravel packed together, with rich topsoil covering all of that. It was shown that the topsoil was probably moved from the valley floor to the terraces because it was much better than the soil higher up the mountain. However, it has been found that the terrace farming area makes up only about 4.9 hectares, 12 acres, of land, and a study of the soil around the terraces showed that what was grown there was mostly corn and potatoes, which was not enough to support the 750 plus people living at Machu Picchu. This explains why when studies were done on the food that the Inca ate at Machu Picchu, it was found that most of what they ate was imported from the surrounding valleys and farther afield. Machu Picchu lies in the southern hemisphere, 13.164 degrees south of the equator. It is 80 kilometers, 50 miles, northwest of Cusco, on the crest of the mountain Machu Picchu, located about 2,430 meters, 7,970 feet, above mean sea level, over 1,000 meters, 3,300 feet, lower than Cusco, which has an elevation of 3,400 meters, 11,200 feet. As such, it had a milder climate than the Inca capital. It is one of the most important archaeological sites in South America, one of the most visited tourist attractions in Latin America and the most visited in Peru. Machu Picchu features wet humid summers and dry frosty winters, with the majority of the annual rain falling from October through to March. Machu Picchu is situated above a bow of the Urubamba River, which surrounds the site on three sides, where cliffs drop vertically for 450 meters 1480 feet, to the river at their base. The area is subject to morning mists rising from the river. The location of the city was a military secret, and its deep precipices and steep mountains provided natural defenses. The Inca Bridge, an Inca grass rope bridge, across the Urubamba River in the Pongo de Manique, provided a secret entrance for the Inca army. Another Inca bridge was built to the west of Machu Picchu, the Tree Trunk Bridge, at a location where a gap occurs in the cliff that measures 6 meters, 20 feet.
The Taj Mahal crown of the palace originally the Raza Imunawara is an ivory-white marble mausoleum on the southern bank of the river Yamuna in the Indian city of Agra. It was commissioned in 1632 by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan, reigned from 1628 to 1658, to house the tomb of his favorite wife, Mumtaz Mahal. It also houses the tomb of Shah Jahan himself. The tomb is the centerpiece of a 17-hectare, 42-acre, complex, which includes a mosque and a guest house, and is set in formal gardens bounded on three sides by a crenellated wall. Construction of the mausoleum was essentially completed in 1643, but work continued on other phases of the project for another 10 years. The Taj Mahal complex is believed to have been completed in its entirety in 1653 at a cost estimated at the time to be around 32 million rupees, which in 2020 would be approximately 70 billion rupees, about the US $956 million. The construction project employed some 20,000 artisans under the guidance of a board of architects led by the court architect to the emperor, Ustad Ahmed Lahori. The Taj Mahal was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983 for being the jewel of Muslim art in India and one of the universally admired masterpieces of the world's heritage. It is regarded by many as the best example of Mughal architecture and a symbol of India's rich history. The Taj Mahal attracts 7-8 million visitors a year, and in 2007, it was declared a winner of the new Seven Wonders of the World, 2000-2007, initiative.The Taj Mahal incorporates and expands on design traditions of Indo-Islamic and earlier Mughal architecture. Specific inspiration came from successful Timurid and Mughal buildings including the Guri Amir, the Tomb of Timur, progenitor of the Mughal dynasty, in Samarkand, Humayun's tomb which inspired the Charba Gardens and Hasht Behisht, architecture, plan of the site, Itmat ud dallas tomb, sometimes called the Baby Taj, and Shah Jahan's own Jama Masjid in Delhi. While earlier Mughal buildings were primarily constructed of red sandstone, Shah Jahan promoted the use of white marble inlaid with semi-precious stones. Buildings under his patronage reached new levels of refinement. The tomb is the central focus of the entire complex of the Taj Mahal. It is a large, white marble structure standing on a square plinth and consists of a symmetrical building with an iwan, an arch shaped doorway, topped by a large dome and finial. Like most Mughal tombs, the basic elements are Indo Islamic in origin. The base structure is a large multi chambered cube with chamfered corners forming an unequal eight sided structure that is approximately 55 meters 180 feet, on each of the four long sides. Each side of the iwan is framed with a huge pishtak, or vaulted archway with two similarly shaped arched balconies stacked on either side. This motif of stacked pishtaks is replicated on the chamfered corner areas, making the design completely symmetrical on all sides of the building. Four minarets frame the tomb, one at each corner of the plinth facing the chamfered corners. The main chamber houses the false sarcophagi of Mumtaz Mahal and Shah Jahan. The actual graves are at a lower level. The exterior decorations of the Taj Mahal are among the finest in Mughal architecture. As the surface area changes, the decorations are refined proportionally. The decorative elements were created by applying paint, stucco, stone inlays, or carvings. In line with the Islamic prohibition against the use of anthropomorphic forms, the decorative elements can be grouped into either calligraphy, abstract forms or vegetative motifs. Throughout the complex are passages from the Quran that comprise some of the decorative elements. Recent scholarship suggests that Aminat Khan chose the passages. The calligraphy on the great gate reads O soul, thou art at rest. Return to the Lord at peace with him, and he at peace with you. The calligraphy was created in 1609 by a calligrapher named Abdul Haq. Shah Jahan conferred the title of Aminat Khan upon him as a reward for his dazzling virtuosity. Near the lines from the Quran at the base of the interior dome is the inscription, written by the insignificant being, Aminat Khan Shirazi. Much of the calligraphy is composed of a florid Thuliath script made of jasper or black marble inlet in white marble panels. Higher panels are written in a slightly larger script to reduce the skewing effect when viewed from below. The calligraphy found on the marble cenotaphs in the tomb is particularly detailed and delicate. Abstract forms are used throughout, especially in the plinth, minarets, gateway, mosque, jawab, and, to a lesser extent, on the surfaces of the tomb. The domes and vaults of the sandstone buildings are worked with tracery of incised painting to create elaborate geometric forms. Herringbone inlays define the space between many of the adjoining elements. White inlays are used in sandstone buildings and darker black inlays on white marbles. Mortared areas of the marble buildings have been stained or painted in a contrasting color which creates a complex array of geometric patterns. 
Floors and walkways use contrasting tiles or blocks and tessellation patterns. O and the lower walls of the tomb are white marble dados sculpted with realistic bas relief depictions of flowers and vines. The marble has been polished to emphasize the exquisite detailing of the carvings. The dado frames and archway spandrels have been decorated with Petra Dura inlays of highly stylized, almost geometric vines, flowers, and fruits. The inlay stones are of yellow marble, jasper, and jade polished and leveled to the surface of the walls. The complex is set around a large 300 meter, 980 feet, square Charbar Mole garden. The garden uses raised pathways that divide each of the four quarters of the garden into 16 sunken parterres or flowers. Halfway between the tomb and gateway in the center of the garden is a raised marble water tank with a reflecting pool positioned on a north-south axis to reflect the image of the mausoleum. The elevated marble water tank is called al hod al kothar in reference to the tank of abundance promised to Muhammad. Elsewhere, the garden is laid out with avenues of trees labeled according to common and scientific name and fountains. The Charba Garden, a design inspired by Persian gardens, was introduced to India by Babur, the first Mole Emperor. It symbolizes the four flowing rivers of Jana, Paradise, and reflects the Paradise Garden derived from the Persian Paradisa, meaning walled garden. In mystic Islamic texts of the Mole period, Paradise is described as an ideal garden of abundance with four rivers flowing from a central spring or mountain, separating the garden into north, west, south, and east. Most Mole Char Ba is rectangular with a tumor pavilion in the center. The Taj Mahal garden is unusual in that the main element, the tomb, is located at the end of the garden. With the discovery of Mat Abba or Moonlight Garden on the other side of the Yamuna, the interpretation of the Archaeological Survey of India is that the Yamuna River itself was incorporated into the garden's design and was meant to be seen as one of the rivers of paradise. Similarities in layout and architectural features with the Shalimar Gardens suggest both gardens may have been designed by the same architect, Ali Martin. Early accounts of the garden describe its profusion of vegetation, including abundant roses, daffodils, and fruit trees. As the Mughal Empire declined, the Taj Mahal and its gardens also declined. By the end of the 19th century, the British Empire controlled more than three-fifths of India and assumed management of the Taj Mahal. They changed the landscaping to their liking which more closely resembled the formal lawns of London. Christ the Redeemer is an Art Deco statue of Jesus Christ in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, created by French sculptor Paul Landowski and built by Brazilian engineer Haider da Silva Costa, in collaboration with the French engineer Albert Cacquet. Romanian sculptor Gheorg Leonida fashioned the face. Constructed between 1922 and 1931, the statue is 30 meters, 98 feet, high, excluding its 8 meter, 26 feet, pedestal. The arms stretch 28 meters, 92 feet, wide. The statue weighs 635 metric tons, 625 long, 700 short tons, and is located at the peak of the 700 meter, 2,300 feet, Corcovado Mountain in the Tijuca Forest National Park overlooking the city of Rio de Janeiro. 
A symbol of Christianity across the world, the statue has also become a cultural icon of both Rio de Janeiro and Brazil and was voted as one of the new seven wonders of the world. It is made of reinforced concrete and soapstone. Vincentian priest Pedro Maria Boss first suggested placing a Christian monument on Mount Corcovado in the mid 1850s to honor Princess Isabel, regent of Brazil and the daughter of Emperor Pedro II, but the project was not approved. In 1889, the country became a republic, and due to the separation of church and state, the proposed statute was dismissed. The Catholic CIRCLE clarification needed of Rio made a second proposal for a landmark statue on the mountain in 1920. The group organized an event called Semana do Monumento, Monument Week, to attract donations and collect signatures to support the building of the statue. The organization was motivated by what they perceived as godlessness in society. The donations came mostly from Brazilian Catholics. TH designs considered for the statue of the Christ included a representation of the Christian cross, a statue of Jesus with a globe in his hands, and a pedestal symbolizing the world. The statue of Christ the Redeemer with open arms, a symbol of peace, was chosen. Local engineer Haider da Silva Costa and artist Carlos Oswald designed the statue. French sculptor Paul Landowski created the work. In 1922, Landowski commissioned fellow Parisian Romanian sculptor Georg Leonida, who studied sculpture at the Fine Arts Conservatory in Bucharest, and in Italy. A group of engineers and technicians studied Landowski's submissions and felt building the structure of reinforced concrete, designed by Albert Cacquet, instead of steel, was more suitable for the cross shaped statue. The concrete making up the base was supplied from Limham, Sweden. The outer layers are soapstone, chosen for its enduring qualities and ease of use. Construction took nine years, from 1922 to 1931, and cost the equivalent of US $250,000, equivalent to $3,600,000 in 2020, and the monument opened on October 12, 1931. During the opening ceremony, the statue was to be lit by a battery of floodlights turned on remotely by Italian shortwave radio inventor Guglielmo Marconi, stationed 9,200 kilometers, 5,700 mi, away in Rome, but because of bad weather, the lights were activated on site. I in October 2006, on the 75th anniversary of the statue's completion, Archbishop of Rio, Cardinal Eusebio Oscar Sheet, consecrated a chapel, named after Brazil's patron saint, Our Lady of the Apparition, under the statue, allowing Catholics to hold baptisms and weddings there. Lightning struck the statue during a violent thunderstorm on February 10, 2008, causing some damage to the fingers, head, and eyebrows. The Rio de Janeiro state government initiated a restoration effort to replace some of the outer soapstone layers and repair the lightning rods on the statue. Lightning damaged it again on January 17, 2014, dislodging a finger on the right hand. In 2010, a massive restoration of the statue began. Work included cleaning, replacing the mortar and soapstone on the exterior, restoring iron in the internal structure, and waterproofing the monument. Vandals attacked the statue during renovation, spraying paint along the arm. Mayor Eduardo Pays called the act a crime against the nation. The culprits later apologized and presented themselves to the police. In reference to Brazil striker Ronaldo's usual goal celebration of both arms outstretched, the Pirelli Tire Company ran a 1998 commercial in which he replaced the statue while in an Inter Milan strip. The commercial was controversial with the Catholic Church. In 1990, several organizations, including the Archdiocese of Rio de Janeiro, media company Grupo Globo, oil company Shell du Brassel, environmental regulator Obama, National Institute of Historic and Artistic Heritage, and the city government of Rio de Janeiro, entered an agreement to conduct restoration work. More work on the statue and its environs was conducted in 2003 and early 2010. In 2003, a set of escalators, walkways, and elevators were installed to facilitate access to the platform surrounding the statue. The four-month restoration in 2010 focused on the statue itself. The statue's internal structure was renovated, and its soapstone mosaic covering was restored by removing a crust of fungi and other microorganisms and repairing small cracks. The lightning rods located in the statue's head and arms were also repaired, and new lighting fixtures were installed at the foot of the statue. The restoration involved 100 people and used more than 60,000 pieces of stone taken from the same quarry as the original statue. During the unveiling of the restored statue, it was illuminated with green and yellow lighting in support of the Brazil national football team playing in the 2010 FIFA World Cup. Maintenance work needs to be conducted periodically due to the strong winds and erosion to which the statue is exposed, as well as lightning strikes. 
The original pale stone is no longer available in sufficient quantity, and replacement stones are increasingly darker in hue.